Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. I've always wanted to film a video here where I can explain to you in depth what is an acrylic paint and how is it different from an oil paint? Because I started out over 35 years ago as an oil artist and then became an acrylic artist. And it's I love my acrylics and I can turn these acrylics into something that reacts very, very similar to an oil. And if you understand the components of acrylics, then you can do that. You can vary it and make it dry really slow or make it dry faster, depending upon, of course, conditions and stuff around. But what you do and how you manipulate that, and I'm going to teach you that here today, okay? So to first, let's, let's talk about oils for something. Something that a lot of people just don't always understand about oils. This I printed off right from the Windsor Newton um, website. And one of the main things about oils, and it will apply to acrylics as well, is the drying times. And the drying times of an oil is uh, directly related to the pigment that is used in those uh, in the making of that paint. For example, here, you know, these are fast drying, medium drying, slow drying colors. And so that is related to the pigment, to the color. So this particular color, it's not what the oil company does to it. It's just that this pigment reacts with the glue, the binder, the media within that paint, and it dries slower. So not all oil colors will dry at exactly the same rate. This will happen also with acrylics, okay? If you have a high quality acrylic, and let me show and let me explain that. So here's here's the the uh, the paint, the Heritage Multimedia, it's a paint that I formulated back, this is a paint that I formulated back in uh, 2008, so it's been around for a while. Prior to that, I formulated other paints for other companies. I worked as a paint campus for a number of years. And so this is the older version, this is, well, actually it's the same paint. This is the older tube, the newer tube. It was originally manufactured by the company Global Art, but now it's manufactured here by our company here. The same thing, same paint and everything like that. Tube changes just ever so slightly, but the same paint. So we call it now the Janssen Art paint. And what is inside this tube? To change the paint, to make this paint do, you can make this paint do whatever it is that you want it to do. Dry really slow, dry fast, work like an oil, thicken up, do anything that you want it to do, but you have to understand what's inside it, okay? Now, one thing that we want to get clear right from the very beginning is not all acrylics out there are the same. I formulated other acrylics to do different things. I formulated acrylic paints that cannot do what I'm going to talk to you about today. So not all acrylics are the same. Some are made, manufactured to dry very hard and to stay very flexible. So we put in a lot of vinyl and stuff like that in so it stays more flexible. Those paints are hard to control and you can't, they're difficult to control their drying time because of the nature of the binder, the glue that's holding it all together, okay? So right from the very beginning, not all acrylics are the same. But let's look at these right here, okay? So inside this tube, what we have is that very important part of it is the pigment. This is what gives it its color. And just like what Winsor Newton says here, different colors are going to dry different, different ways. Red violet here is a quinacridone pigment. It dries really, really slow. As a matter of fact, it dries about four times slower than the titanium white pigment here that I have here. Okay, And this dries slower than the yellow oxide pigment that I have here. In a normal acrylic motion, you don't notice that because we use a lot of water. That water has a certain drying speed to it, and it, everything dries, uh, you know, this everything dries equally. But when you start to change these pigments, these colors, into and react more like oils and extend their drying times, you're going to notice that some colors are going to dry really slow, and some colors are going to dry a little bit faster just like we have in oils, okay? So the pigment, that's what makes it its color. It's red violet, it's yellow, and we get that from organic and inorganic sources here. The red violet here is uh, an organic source here, uh, and then we have inorganic sources. So the pigment gives it its color. Now, different kinds of acrylics are going to vary, let me give a little thing, they'll vary the amount of pigment. 
So a craft acrylic has very little pigment in it, whereas an artist grade acrylic like this one has a lot of pigment in it, okay? That's gonna be important. We'll talk about that just a little bit here as well. The next thing is the binder. That's the glue that we use to hold everything together. And in acrylics, we use what are called acrylic polymer emulsions, acrylic copolymers, all different kinds of things. And that's what makes your acrylic different. Some acrylic polymers, some glues are made to dry really fast. Some glues are made to dry really slow. And then some glues are made that where we can add other things to control the drying time of that glue. Now that's what's inside of this. The glue that is inside this paint that holds this whole thing called an emulsion together is made that it can be altered by other things. Other things that we will call media here, which I'll go into for in just a minute, okay? So not all acrylics can do that. Some binders are different, so you'll notice a difference here. The next thing is the vehicle. Now, the vehicle, what is the vehicle? The vehicle is what transports the what basically carries the paint, carries the binder, carries the paint, carries everything that's going on that you're squirting out of your tube and stuff here. And so that vehicle in most acrylic, most of the time in pretty much all acrylics is water, okay? Now, acrylics will vary the amount. Most of the time, somewhere between 40 and 55% of a tube is water, depending on the quality of the acrylics. This is just a little bit different, but majority of the time it's about 40, 50, 40 to 55%, and it carries, it carries the polymer emulsion. It carries this out onto your palette. Now, this is very important because not all acrylics, all acrylics will basically have this, okay? We'll have those three components to it. Now, in this acrylic here, we have other things into it, what we call media, okay? Media are additives that alter the working properties of the paint film. In other words, what makes it work? Are we thickening it up? Are we slowing down the drying time? Are we making it more slippery? Are we making it more transparent? These are things that we can add into this tube of paint that's going to make it all react and make it all feel a little different. Now, a lot of you always say, oh, I love the feel of these acrylics. Well, part of that is the media. We added a very specific media to it to give the brushability to this. In, a, in paints, we call it the rheology of the paint film, the working properties of that paint film. We add things into it so it feels good in the brush when you're working it. Now you can change that. But media, not all acrylics contain media. This one does. And one of the most important parts of the media is what you see me paint with also all the time. And it's this, it's extender. It is this that we also give out to you here in a bottle. So you can increase this. Now, what is this? This is part of the media that slows down the drying time of this paint, okay? So inside this paint, we have water, okay? And we have this. Water is what? Water is its vehicle, right? Water is the vehicle. And this extender medium here is part of the media. The extender medium, when you put the extender medium out, like if I put a, you know, a little bit of this out here, it's hard to see. It looks like water and everything, but it's slicker. It's, it's slippery. And it is, it's very slippery. It's non-toxic. This is a food additive, actually. So you can get it on your hand. You can use it and, and it's fine. This is actually, the product we actually use is a food additive. It's used in the, in the preparations of a lot of foods and eye drops and all that kind of stuff. So it's non-toxic and it's a very safe product to use. But this little thing that I put it out here like this, in two weeks, it will still be here. It does not dry up like water. It takes a lot of heat to dissipate it, to make it go away, okay? So that's one thing. But this also gives the slippery feeling to the paint, okay? So that's one of the additives. We have other additives in there as well that gives the feeling to the paint that we call it the secret sauce of this paint that actually give it its working properties. But uh, for now, just remember that's the media. So inside this we have the water and we have 
extender. So, so many people write to me all the time. Well, can I just get that, that this heritage extender and can I add it to the, my acrylics and make it work? And I say all the time is, I don't know. And I hate to say that as a paint chemist, I say I don't know because I don't know the formula of the particular acrylic you're using. Not all acrylic binders, not all acrylic glues can accept this, okay? Some are made to dry fast. You have to have very specific binders, very specific glues that as part of their chemistry have this, this ability to enter into the glue and slow it down. So not all paints can do this, okay? So that's, and you'll have to test and see. Sometimes you add that to some paints, it just gets gummy and, and doesn't, doesn't work well at all. Other paints, it'll take it right in, mix up right in, it's very soluble, it goes right in, mixes, then you know that particular binder, that particular glue can do that. Does that make sense? So all acrylics are different. You can't group all of the acrylics into one thing and say, this will work. So unless you try it, I don't, I don't know. And I don't know the formulas of all the different acrylics out there. It, there are way too many. Okay. So you have that. There's other things I'll show you in the media as we get going here. Fillers. Fillers are something that are added. They're cheap. It's like talc. It's gypsum. It's, they're cheap products that are added to the paint in the process especially craft paints. You won't find fillers in artist quality paints. That's why we look for that word artist quality. There's a rule in America, it's 4%, no more than 40% fillers in a paint film can you can put on the label artist quality. We have no fillers whatsoever in any of these tubes of paint. So no fillers, but in a craft acrylic, you'll find that out, okay? You'll find them right away. Now, how do you tell? Well, most crafts acrylics are in bottles, okay? But then also when, but you can't make that generalization statement. You'll find a large percentage of them in bottles. But when you go to mix those colors, if it turns kind of chalky, kind of gray, not real bright colors, you can be assured that there's fillers inside that paint. And you'll, you'll find that as a company starts to add more and more and more fillers to a paint line, they start to increase the number of colors they sell because it's very difficult for them to mix colors. And so we have a very limited line of colors and we tell you how to make colors because we don't have any fillers in here. But there are other great acrylics and you can do, I wrote books with craft acrylics. So you can do a lot of painting with craft acrylics, but when you get to real finite tonal painting that I show in several of the videos, you can't do them with craft acrylics. You need to step up to the artist grade acrylics. So we have pigment, we have binder, we have vehicle, media, and fillers. No fillers inside of here, but you will find it. And you can tell that by uh, because fillers reduce the mixability of the paint, your ability to make other colors. They just turn into mud. They become very muddy, okay? So you have those things in there. Now, how can you vary it? To understand acrylics, you have to, to really understand the acrylics and paint anything you want and completely control the gr drying time of this acrylic, you have to understand the difference between its vehicle and it's media, okay? And that's it. Once you understand that, you can do anything with acrylics and you end all of that frustration. I'm never frustrated with anything I paint with acrylics, ever, because I understand all the components and I know how to vary those and change what it is I want to do, okay? So let's look inside this tube. What is the vehicle? Water. What's the media? Well, we have one main one that I want to talk to you about is this, okay? So in a lot of older videos, a lot of the older videos you see on the channel, we have over almost 500 videos on the channel, you'll see me use this, okay? This is a, a white container that I put here, and then you'll see a bunch of these little caps that I have inside of here, and you'll see me using a lot of, a lot of the paint from painting out of these little containers, and you'll see this sitting off to the side, and you'll see 
me painting and I just dip my brush into the colors there and I'm painting. So what is inside these little caps? And I show that in other videos what it is that I made. But I want to show you right here what it is that I'm doing. What I do is I take a, a and I usually use, and I got a little bit of burnt sienna left in here. And this is usually how I, uh, what I do is I'll take some color and like this and I'll put it into the cap. Here, okay so I'll just go ahead and mix up some of this because I can control all of this completely later now you see that now what's important about it some of this when you're doing this is look at the thickness of the paint okay look at the thickness of the paint it's pretty it's pretty thick it's not real runny okay what is inside this paint right here so I'm gonna put it in here what is inside this paint we have basically pigment binder vehicle and media we don't have any filler okay now what is it that causes this paint to dry if I put this paint out what is it that causes it to dry the vehicle which is water okay this is water so when the water that we have here so our vehicle right here water right this is what we have H2O right so when water when water right here dries out that causes what we call the the pigments and everything here they're little pigment particles they do what we call collates they come together and they start to form what we call micelles or they start to glue themselves together right okay so that's and right now it is balanced so that the paint stays out here pretty thick it's pretty nice pretty easy pretty thick paint now how do i extend we call it extending. How do I make this dry slower? What I have to do is add this medium here, right? This is the extender medium. So I add the extender medium to this, which is what I do in those little caps. I add the extender medium. About 20% is what I like. And then I sit down and I mix it up. And it'll take just a few minutes. But since the binder, the glue that's in this paint, accepts the medium, you'll notice this mixes up pretty well, pretty quickly here. Okay, so now what have I done inside this paint? So you whip this up, boom, and you notice it mixes up really nice, really fast, really well. Because the binder that we use, the glue we use, is based around that particular glycol element that we have inside of the, the uh, uh, extender. And so it, extend, it, it extends it. Now, this paint here will dry slower. This paint here will dry slower because I've added extender to it. But what ultimately still causes this paint to dry faster? It still has the same amount of water in it that I originally started with. Does that make sense? Okay, so about 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, we started doing this. And what we were doing was we started putting out in caps like this, and then we would leave it open for about 8 to 10 hours. And every couple of hours, what we would do is we would stir this paint. We would stir it again. And what we're doing is we're allowing the water to dry out of the paint, and we would replace it, continually replace it with just a little bit more extender, okay? And mix that back up. And then slowly let it dry, the water leave, till you have your nice thick paint again. But you know, now it's a little bit thin because water is still in there. So in the older videos, what you see when you see me painting with this is what I have done is I've taken paint, I've added extender to it, I've stirred it all up, and then I've let the water, I've let it sit open for 8, 10, sometimes a little longer depending on the pigment, the color of the pigment, okay? which some colors will dry up faster, some will dry up slower. But depending upon the pigment, and until this starts to thicken back up to where I really saw it, and what's leaving is water, okay? Water's leaving. And what I'm doing is I'm replacing the water in the paint with extender. So I'm replacing the fast drying part of the paint, which is water, with extender here and which the extender dries really, really slow. And that's what, and so I did that for years. We called it global color, globalizing the color. And that term, people say, where did you get the word global? Global was a term that the Dutch painters used to use for working the entire painting at the same time. It was called the global working of the color. And we, 
with acrylics, we could start doing that because we could slow these drying times down to four, six, eight, ten. It's long, the longest I've ever really taken the heritage is to 36 hours drying time. And you can get there if you understand the acrylics. So we would do it. That's the way we would do it. Okay. Now, since that time, and remember, this is, this is 15, 15 years ago. Okay. A little longer. This is 15 years ago or so since we started came up, we come out this. We've made a lot of prog uh, a lot of advancements in the acrylics since then, and we continue to do it. But one of the things we did with the heritage was we wanted the acrylics to always be adjustable, so we can take in new ad advancements as we get them. And Derivan is a fantastic company. They actually make the paint for us. They make our formula for us. And they're down in Sydney, Australia. And Matisse Derivan. And they came out with this acrylic open medium. And it works with our colors as well. Now, what is open medium? Open medium, basically, you're getting rid of a lot of the vehicle. It's binder and media. So this, this is media. Open medium is going to be binder and media, glue and media. And because they added that, because this really slows down the paint. And the more you use of it, the longer you have to paint. As a matter of fact, you can, I've put this stuff out on my palette here. And I have come back three weeks later and it's still sitting there just like this. Hasn't dried, hasn't set up, hasn't done anything. It is an, an amazing acrylic media. And they have done such a wonderful job with this uh, media. It answers so many questions for today's acrylic artists, okay? So this is the open medium. Now, you notice, see, here's, here's my extender. It's really thin. It's just like water. Open medium is thick and it's sticky. And so you'll see in a lot of the newer videos, especially videos that I put on the channel in the last three years, you'll see me painting with open medium. So if I was, I have a couple of ways in which I can use this. One is I can, and you'll see me explain this in videos. Here's a little burnt sienna. I can take my burnt sienna and I can brush mix in some extender here. And you can see I can go very thin, I like to use this thinner with very thin applications because it slides, it's nice, and it's thin, and that will take hours to dry right there because I have quite a bit of extender in it. As I add more paint, what am I also adding right now? Because what's in the paint? Water. So as I add more paint, that water is going to overcome the... Uh, the, wa the uh, um, media that I put here, and this now will dry a little faster. So, it, so if I wanted to paint thicker, to put something on thicker, then I, this will now dry faster than this one, which has a lot of extender in it. And so, but Derivan came up with a thicker medium now that even has a little glue into it. So now I can take some paint and some of this and I get thick paint, thick paint that will dry just like this one does. So it's a thick, slow, very slow drying paint now. Very slow and thick. So they did that for us. They put that out and it feels just like the paint does here. Just a, the paint is just a little more slippery. You feel, if you're really good at feeling the paint, you'll feel this has just a bit of a pull to it, which I really like in all the Prima painting. So now I can make this and this dry at the same time, where this is very thin, this is thicker. So you'll see me in a lot of videos, I'll say to you, and listen very close when I say to it, I'll use extender here anywhere that I want I'm putting on transparent, beginning colors, usually in shadows. And then when I switch over to highlights and stuff, when I start painting thicker in my painting, that's where I switch over to the open medium now, the new medium that Derivan has that is thicker. So it allows me to keep my paint thick and it allows me 
to slow down, way down. Matter of fact, I had a student that wrote me the other day. She goes, I painted this painting and it's been a week and I tried to varnish it and some of the paint came off. And that's because it wasn't dry. That's because you used too much open medium. So if, you're, if you paint with a lot of open medium, what I tell everybody is go set your painting out in the sun for a little bit or use a hairdryer on it for a little bit to help tighten that up and drive off some of that extra glycol and stuff we have in that media. Help it tighten up, help that, that glue to set because the, the extenders and stuff slow down the setting of the glue, okay? So we have to, and a lot of that can be driven off or taken off with heat. Just use a hairdryer or set it out in the sun, okay? So now this, all this stuff here is gonna slow down and your drying time quite a bit, okay? So we have that. Now, Dervan also created uh, another thing that helps you control it even more. So there are, the thing is, there can be so many different ways to control the paint that it can get so confusing. And I understand that from a beginner's perspective. It gets confusing when you have so many things that you can add. But if you break it down into what causes this thing to dry quick, the water that's in it. So if I want it to dry slow, I want to drive the water out of this, okay? And uh, eventually I want to get this. And this right here will do that. That water will drive out of that and it will become great. And it'll become just like an oil paint after a while. After you start removing that water and replacing it with extender, it will become closer and closer and closer to an oil paint. And sometimes that takes quite a bit of time, but that water leaves. We have the open medium, which makes it, which gives you a couple of hours to really do great things in a painting and, uh, you know, really, really uh, get some nice effects from trans and this for transparency and this for thicker. But, oh, but Dervan has something else, which is awesome, which is called an acrylic thickener. Now you can control the thickness of the paint as well. Now, what you always have to remember is, even though you may thicken something up, water is still there. So you can, that water is always going to cause the paint film to dry up. So unless you remove some of the water, like I do in this little cap, then that paint always has the potential to dry. But see, let's say I have this little bit here. If I want to thicken it up, and I'll just make sure, and it takes ever so little of this just the tiniest little bit here and I'll add this right into here and I start to mix it up you'll see what's happening here what's happening is I'm thickening up this paint I'm making it it's becoming thicker again and it takes a little bit of mixing here but all of a sudden this paint is thickening up this is the thickener so if you want to use your paint here see how thick that is now so all of a sudden I've made this paint thick and this paint will dry slower, but it won't dry to its absolute potential because what is still inside this? Water. But now I can have this as thick, thick dry, you know, thick, and it'll feel different than this. I really like the feeling of this here. And, but each one will have a different feeling. You'll see me use this sometimes in some of the videos because it does have a great feeling to it and it works really, really well with the, with the knife. So now you have this. So can you thicken up just paint by itself? Absolutely. If I, if I am working with just a pure acrylic, matter of fact, let me just squirt some out here. If I'm working with just the pure acrylic like this, and let's just say I want to put in a really thick area of my painting, then I'm going to take just a touch of this, just a touch of this here, okay, and I'm going to add it to this, and you'll notice it start to change. See how it's mixing, it's changing, now it's getting hard to mix because it's becoming very thick, see? So this is the thickener that you can add. So now I can make my acrylics really really thick so let's say you want to lay in some really thick textured highlights or something like that you can do that quite easily so here's my original one that i put out okay here it is thick and here it is thin or well right out of the tube and then up here i can make it even thinner so you control that you control that but 
What is still in that paint right there? Water, right? Water's in both of them. So as long as the water's in there, your drying time is always going to be controlled by how much water is in there. Even though when you replace this into it, you will slow it down. But if you really want slow, slow drying acrylics, you use this old method here and take the water out. Does that make sense? Now, I don't really paint that way anymore. I'll show you in a lot of techniques what I call acrylic a la prima type techniques where I paint tonal. I don't paint really uh, that oil uh, look anymore because I paint much faster and I like the way I paint today. I don't go back to that, but I can. I can make this dry super slow. I find that most of the techniques I do today, I don't need to worry about that. But I want to show you. So I have this. <laughs> so there's just lots of ways. And I know it can get all confusing. But once you understand water and extender, thickener and all that stuff, and, and how they relate inside this paint tube, you'll be able to manipulate the colors to do whatever it is you want them to do. Okay, so what is this? You've seen me use this in some videos, especially whenever I'm doing portraits. This is what I like to use. What is this? That is this mixed with the thickener. That's all I do is I just take some of the, uh, some of the extender out here and I mix it up in a big thing at a time and because it lasts for years. I've had this particular container of it for over a year now, but I'll take some of my thickener and I'll add it right here and I'll start mixing the, this up. And what I like to do is put it in a container like that and just shake the bejeebies out of it. It mixes really well. But as you see what's happening here as I'm mixing this, this is becoming thicker and thicker and thicker. And you have to mix it here for quite a bit because it'll see how it's continuing to get thicker as I mix. Here. So don't just think, oh, it's still wet. You know, no, just keep mixing and mixing and mixing. It does not take very much. It takes a bit to mix it all together. But all of a sudden I have a I have a gel. See that? And that's what this is. This is gel. This is gel that I've mixed up. And so I can mix this up. Can I add this to open medium? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mix it up with open medium. Now you have a super your own conglomeration of what it is and it works really well now why do i use the gel sometimes i like the feel of the gel over the feel of open medium it all depends on what it is that you're going to do and that is every single one of us is going to be a different type of artist every single one of us is going to want a little different way or a different you know different method to do it and what we decided to do with this line of acrylics was let you control it, but there's some learning to it that you can control. You can use it like a regular acrylic, but then once you understand what's inside it, you open up the door to thousands of possibilities of finding exactly the way you want to paint with it, okay? So I have this. I can mix all of this together, and now I have just a really a little dirty from the burnt sienna, but that is an, an amazing feeling medium here that if I left this out, it would be here three weeks from now. It will still be here. It will not, nothing will happen to it, okay? So what is it you say, Davey, okay, you like it in portraits. What is it that you do different, okay? This is a color. I've had it in here for about two years. It's out of the portraits. You've seen me paint it with it in portraits, okay? This is how I like my portrait paints is I like them thicker. I like them to feel and work just like an oil. So you see here, it is thicker and it works here and it looks and feels and reacts just like an oil here. And I do that. I make that color just like that. How do I do it? I dry out some of the water and I add some of the, uh, this particular thing here is mixed with gel. So I mix up my color, I mix it with gel, I leave it open for a little bit, and I mix it, and I leave it like that. If it ever starts to tighten up too much, which can happen over time, same with oils. Oils will start to tighten up over time. If it ever starts to tighten up too much, I just give it another little squirt. Uh, every couple of months, 
Some of you that live in super hot areas might have to do it twice a week or whatever. But I do this and I start mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing. What am I adding to it? More media. And it's all going to mix back up again. And you you keep mixing until it starts to get to the creamy consistency. And you see that, that you like. But now I've added more extender medium into that. More of the water's gone and I get this paint. See, I like that. It's a little bit thinner than what I really like to paint with. So, you know, this is a little bit thinner than what this is here. I like this consistency, what I, what I want. And how do you get that? Just leave it open for just a little bit. And let it start to tighten up, you know, and, and then seal it off. Seal it off. Make sure you... Make sure you don't have too much air up there. If you have too much air, you just put some more extender right over the top of it, and that'll help hold that off there. Or you can mist the inside of the lid. I show you all different kinds of ways to do this, but I'll just mix this back up into here. But you make the consistency of paint that you want for a given area. And so I like it like this because if I'm laying in colors to begin with, like in a portrait, I may take this off to the side and I may add a few drops of extender right over here like this and whip this up and make this paint easier to apply. Thinner and it'll stroke on really, really easy because it's thinner. So now this thin stuff here will stroke on really easy and then I have this thicker stuff that I can, you know, pick up in my brush, pick up in my brush and lay in thick strokes. This is for initial blocking in and stuff it's thin it goes quick it goes easy and this becomes textured and stuff strokes later i control that i'm controlling the consistency of the paint by you know uh, by the the thickness of it i have the acrylic thickener so that original gel is in there it's thicker if i want if i want how, let's just say oh geez i have this all mixed up on my palette and it's a little bit too thin for me to use how can i get it back add just the tiniest little bit just the tiniest it won't take doesn't like this container here will probably last me my entire painting career doesn't take very much and i can add that right back into here and take this paint right back to its original consistency that I like to use on portraits and stuff for the highlights and stuff of portraits, okay? Now, what makes this work so well is there's hardly any water in that particular paint. That water's been gone through a replacement. I've let, you know, I've had it for quite a long time. I've used it in containers like this, and they're open, and it's drying out. Now, in the last three years, you don't see me paint like that. So in all the videos you see from 2015, 16, 17, a lot of the older videos, you'll see me paint a lot with this. And over the years, I've changed to do what's called acrylic a la prima, is I brush mix in what I want to do. You'll see me put out some of the gel here, and you'll see me brush mix into it. You'll see me do a lot of the open medium and just brush mix in. You know how I, you know how I like to do that. And it's, it's all going to depend um, on how you like to paint. Let me just show you something here. What's the difference, okay? So I show you. I, I told you I show you a little technique. Let me put out a little white. Now, when I'm putting it out, is right out of the tube. So this is acrylic, right? And what's inside of this? this? There's media inside of it, but there's also a lot of water. So this paint will dry as an acrylic. Does that make sense? It'll dry as an acrylic. And let's just put out a uh, little bit of maybe some blue here. We'll make like a little rose or something here. And I'll show you the really the difference here. And it's really quite basic. When you're thinking about acrylics, what are the two things that are inside of that that is the working properties of it? One is water and one is the media, right? The extender that's in there. So I'm going to rinse my all that extender out of this old brush that I have here that I also stirred flesh color with. So let's just gray this down for a minute. We'll take a little bit of yellow and burnt sienna, a tiny bit of blue. A little too much blue there, Dave. So I have acrylic. I'm painting acrylic right now, right? 
and I'll add white and I'll make a nice gray kind of color here, okay? So this is acrylic. And so if I come over here and start to put this on, let's say I'm gonna paint a little rose here. That's, I'm gonna put that on and let's just, oh, let's get a little, my favorite color, the red violet. Let's put a little bit of that out here, okay? Acrylic right straight from the tube. But it's a little slower drying than a lot of acrylics you have out there because we also have media in this as well. But I'll come in here and I'll push, and I won't even blend this too well, but I'll push in a little bit of a center. Let's say we're gonna do a rose and a little bit of the bowl here. And I won't even blend those out. We'll leave those rough, okay? Now, this will dry. This will dry pretty fast here because I didn't add anything to it. So what it's already starting to dry here on the outside edges, okay? Because it's water. It has a lot of water in here, okay? Most of the time, right straight from the tube. Now, it's warm in here. It's 85 outside today. So it's warm in here and we don't have the air on. So it's warm. And the air is very dry. And so it's gonna cause everything that I do to dry very quickly here. And that's okay. That's all right. Let's take it over here to the side. Let's add some extender medium here. Let's add extender medium to this. Now there's something I showed way early on in some of the videos, I haven't done it for a long time. And that's if you really want it to draw, um, extend, you put a little bit of extender over the surface. What that does is that goes into the paint and kind of uh, just, just gonna increase the amount of extender that you're adding to your paint. But now when you see this go on, you can see it's going on a little bit thinner, a little bit more transparent because the extender is gonna make it transparent. What if I didn't wanna make it that transparent? You could use open medium. So I could reach up over here and slow it down right up over here by adding some open medium if I wanted this to be a little thicker. And I'll like, you can see the difference, see the difference? Now the open medium is a little thicker and allows me to apply the paint a little thicker. Now this will dry slower than this. This is almost dry over here, completely dry, <laughs> okay? And over here, this is gonna dry slower. Let's take, but I have to continue to add that open medium. Let's come over here with some open medium We'll add a little bit of the, and mix it up a bit. Add a bit of the red violet. We'll come right in here. This will allow me to lift the pressure on the brush and start to blend out a little bit if you want that softness that comes from blending, okay? And we can, but you need to mix up that open medium in it a little bit so it has time. So I can put an edge here like that, okay? And then I can wipe my brush. I can come back where I have some more of the open medium here and this, and I can come through and soften and blend down those sides and soften down those sides to whatever I want. I have that time. But see, this doesn't bother me either. So this is dry here now, right? This is acrylic. But one of the things we designed, and this is where I become more of an acrylic painter, one of the things we designed into this one, into this paint was the binder dries really, really slow. It takes an, it takes 24 hours for the binder, the glue in this paint to really harden up. And so you'll hear me say several times in several videos, you can always use the solvent or I'm going to use an acrylic solvent technique. What is the solvent? Well, in, in oil paints, it's paint thinner, mineral spirits. In acrylics, what is it? Water, okay? Water. So I'll take some water, some nice dirty water that I have here, and you'll see me for the first time here, I can push water on here like this and use that to soften and blend as well because the acrylics will stay soft for a while, for a couple hours. And so I don't need to go through all of that process. I can just take a little bit of water here, push it over the edge of this, and push and blend those two together, even with my finger like that. So I can make that soft little look of the rose. Or if I want to have something up here, I put a little water and I'll push through. Even though that's dry, I'll push through. You can do that with the acrylics for a while. That's called the solvent technique. But this is still very, very wet, and it will stay wet, and it'll stay wet here. I should have did this at the beginning of the video. It'll stay wet like that for hours. 
depending upon how much open medium you add, how much extender you add, or how much water is in your paint. Did you take some water out? Or, you know, like I do in these caps here, this, you can leave this on, this, this paint here has about an eight hour drying time when I use it on a portrait. Now I don't always like that. And so sometimes I'll have to use a hair dryer. That's how I dry it out. I'll have to use a hair dryer. But already this is starting to dry up again and I'll be able to manipulate it by, by what I, you know, however I wanna do. But I've become an acrylic painter. So if I wanna make a soft rose here, let me stay away from that because that has medium in it. Let me go back up here for a second and make an acrylic shadow again. A little bit of the shadow kind of color. And we'll make a, just pinch wipe my brush a minute. We'll make this a little warmer so it looks like I know what I'm doing. A little bit of white, okay? So let's put a, so this right here, so this is how I like to paint now. This is, this is more of the acrylic. So that's drying up there. And so I'll come in and I'll stroke a nice light stroke, like right there like that, and push that light. That's the front of the rose I want to put in. Now what I have to do is, what I do is I look at this color and I look at this color. I'm at this color and I'm right down here. And what I'll do is make a color right in between. This is what I call, I don't want to touch it. It has extender in it. Let's go right back up here. I make a color or a tone that's right in between the two and I, and I stroke that on a couple times. And you'll see me sometimes just use my finger real quick and push. Sometimes you'll see me push a little bit of water on it. Some, you know, like I'll come here and touch a little bit of water into this to soften it. You'll see me paint throughout the channel a thousand different ways because on the channel, what I'm trying to do on our YouTube channel is teach you all different kinds of ways to use this. I don't just use one. I'm a teacher. I like to teach. I want everybody to find their way and practice and try all different kinds of ways. So here I'll put that light. I'll come down here, slide to a little more shadow color here. And sometimes you'll see me just push them together. So I can make that look like it's blended across there. I can soften that little mark off there. If I, if I get down here and I don't like it here, I can always rinse my brush. Just rinse my brush really well here like this. Take just a little bit of water in my brush and go over it a couple times. And I will soften that out to and, and get the look that I want. So with the acrylic, you can use water again back into it as a solvent. Now, not all acrylics do that because some acrylics are made to dry fast and dry hard, so you don't pull holes in it. Let's say, you know, for example, the acrylics that we make to paint your house with, we made them make them to dry hard and fast so you can come back with a second coat pretty quickly. But here, we made it, we make it to dry slow and to, so that you can manipulate it to do all different kinds of things. And you can come back on here we can, I can thin this with a little bit of water and I can come in and put in some softness to it. I like to push my finger and you can see you can really start to get a nice blend. But what's this over here? All this is still wet, see? So why we've done all of this, all this I don't need to do anything with. This is all still really wet and it will stay wet here because I've added all that other stuff where this thing dries really fast several times over. Does it see the difference there? What do you like to do? I started out years ago when I came from oils. Years ago, I kept trying to make my acrylics more and more and more like oils. As I became a better acrylic painter, I started to work more on tones and softening. So if I, you know, if I want to come in with another tone or another thing in there, I will, you know, I'll put on another petal, like right here, you know, maybe I come in here and I'll strike on another petal and then I'll look for the softness. A tone painter will come in and say, that's where I was. I'm just going to drop that tone a little darker. Let's come back over here. And then I'll put that tone on so it's a little softer. And then maybe I touch it with my finger just a bit to soften it. But I create the, 
I paint in tone. So I look at what I did, and then I start to head towards the shadow, darken a little bit, darken a little bit. Whereas if you're here, what you're going to be doing is putting on a light pedal and then blending it. So if I come in here with a light pedal, let's put a little yellow in that, and let's add a little open medium because we want this to dry slower. Take out that extra right there. Put in, mix up that open medium in it. And so when I strike that light pedal here, okay, when I strike that light pedal, now what you gotta remember is this is really pigmented paint. So if I touch it again and touch it again and touch it again, that white's gonna go all the way down to the rose. Maybe you wanna carry it down, but see how it carries it down? If I wanna soften the blend, this is why you see me all the time. Pinch wipe the extra out of your brush. You don't, you don't lose that much paint. And then lightly, step back if you're a long handle brush, step back and just lightly touch it and it'll blend for you. It'll blend, it'll blend just like an oil and you'll get that softer, smoother blend with it. The key is pinch wiping that off and then using that soft. These brushes are designed exactly to do this. This is the Global Art Supply, Will Nouts Jansen Art. Uh, fusion brushes, they're designed to use the, you know, to make the paint react just like this. And so I can come in here and set another light little petal right across like that. Pinch wipe my brush, the extra paint off it so it's nice and soft and then just pull down and blend those two together like that. And you get a softer three strokes. I put that pedal on with three strokes. Now, what causes you to do this? You understand the paint. So here I've got this all wet. This is already dry. This is all really, really dry, but I still have working time. What do I have? What could I soften any of that out? Let's say that I wanted to come out here and let's go back acrylic right up here, okay? Let's say I want to put a pedal right here. Boom, I put this pedal on, just like that. How do I soften that into that? I can do a tone stroke where I pick up a little bit more, and this is how I like to paint. I like to paint now tone. I can do a tone stroke and put a tone stroke in there that's going to be heading towards that shadow. Or if I want to use the solvent technique, all I have to do, since this is already dry, is just take a little, a little bit of water and push it over that and push. And all of a sudden those come together and they will blend together and soften together because I'm using the solvent part of it. See, the solvent part of it. You can do that for, a, you know, for a good couple hours, but as the time goes on, it gets harder and harder and harder to do that because that binder starts to dry up. How do you make that binder dry slower? You add extender to it. You could, you could paint like this, and then when you're done, switch over to this technique. You know, you can, you can paint all different kinds of ways. Let's go back to the a la prima that I like here. So I call this acrylic a la prima. So you're painting it one time through like that. And sometimes you'll see me do that. Sometimes I'll put a stroke, a tone stroke in there. Sometimes I'll just take, stroke a little bit of water right there so I have something to work with and push and blend those two together like that until they soften in. And you can do all that. These are non-toxic. You don't have to worry anything about them. You know, unlike, and you should always, always check your colors. You know, check your colors. Check the, whoever manufactured them there. Make sure your paints and stuff are non-toxic. If you're an oil painter, never touch your paints. You know, I got, I got into a health problem with that when I was very young. So you don't want to do that. So here, this is still wet. <laughs> See, this is wet. And I can still push that around and blend that in and do that. It's going to stay wet. You have lots of time to manipulate it. If I wanted to do that with this now, I'd have to put a little water on it or restroke it. And, you know, so this is what we like to do. The paints here, as you can see, are designed to do whatever you want. You can slow them way down. Use them for your own specific mixes. I have things I like to do. You can put them out like this that you see me in the old way. This takes a lot of time to do, to build it like this. Um, 
you know, there's much more efficient ways to paint today, like just adding the open medium. So in a lot of the older videos where you see me paint with, you know, and you'll see off to the side, this little container of all these little caps of colors. That's the old way. That's, you know, ooh, seven years ago, eight years ago, we've made advances since then. And uh, you'll, you'll see me paint those, but you could just brush mix in open medium and paint it you know, purely like that now. So instead of going through all those mixes, you can do that, but you could still do that because what's ultimately, what are you trying to do in here? Ultimately, the longest drying acrylic is not going to have any water in it. So you've got to figure out how to get water out. This is a great way to get water out. And if you want those colors to dry and stay forever, you got to get the water out of them. That's the thing that dries them really, really fast. Okay. And here you can see, you know, from originally where I put it down, even where I put that extender, remember I thickened it up and this had extender in it. Remember this is, you can see this is starting to dry, but right here with this open medium, nope. This is staying wet. And where I thickened it up over here, that's staying wet. Everything here is staying completely wet, except for up over here where I had it, with this, this is starting to dry, but down over here, it's not, it's very wet, okay? The one thing here for a close, the one thing that I want you to remember about everything that you're painting, if you're brush mixing things in, which is what you'll see me do in the videos all the time, I like the brush mix. So I'll let some areas dry. And if something, if I'm painting this and something dries, I just take a little water, loosen it up, and I, I'm right back to where I is. When you have to feed your paints, okay? If you're brush mixing in, say, open medium into this paint you have to feed it that open medium every time you pick up paint you should pick up a little bit of that open medium or put it into a pile here on your palette that has that in there otherwise it's going to dry okay otherwise it's going to dry now you could still use that paint people ask me all the time can i still use that paint heck yeah i can use that paint all i have to do is put a little water in it and it'll come back you can use that paint still it'll come back okay or if you've got this too thick here, how can you thin it out? Add some extender to it. That's going to thick the, thin this right back out. You know, add some extender to it if you want that slower drying. Add water to it if you want that faster drying or you want to use the water as a solvent. Okay? So there's a thousand ways to do it. Every single one of us lives in a different area. And you go through the four seasons, you may have to adjust your paints depending on are you painting in a real hot, dry area? Are you painting in a colder area or whatever? I always find myself adjusting my paints just a little bit to get the maximum flexibility that I like to paint. And ultimately, in the last... Well, in quite a few of the last videos in the last couple years, you see me paint with a lot of open medium, usually towards the end of the painting, not very often in the beginning. I like to paint, you know, acrylic. So see, this is dry here. This is dry. But I can still make beautiful roses here. And this is wet. This is all still wet. See, there's the difference here. This is dry here. But I can still paint. And that's the thing I wanted to get to you guys here. I can still paint. I can still put in anything here. And I'm putting an acrylic on top. I can even let that dry a little bit. And you'll see me all the time say tone on tone. What I'll do there normally is I'll take a little bit different of a tone, any kind of tone here, just a little bit of violet in it to head towards that shadow a bit. But I'll take a tone. Let's put up just a bit of the color in there so I'll take that tone and I like to strike it like that see and that's how I like to paint and I'll soften some edges back and I'll set that tone in and that's where I like that undulation here it's not super smooth see how more smooth that is over there and how it's there I feel I can you know when I paint wet on wet here I tend to blend too much and everything becomes too smooth where I like this, this undulation of color there. I th that's where I'm at in my painting career today. But everyone's different. If you want to do that, you can do that. You can blend it as smooth as you want, depending upon how much vehicle to how much 
media you're using okay so hopefully that explains a little bit about the paints to you and we'll put this up where you can you know you can get something like this and um you'll you'll understand that when you start adding a lot of this media getting rid of the vehicle the co this color right here which is red violet will dry really slow it and you'll notice that white dries a lot faster than it does and you'll start noticing those differences just like oils because in oils and the heritage line and oils use exactly the same pigments we use the same pigments except for we don't put cads chromiums or cobalts in our line just because those are carcinogens and we don't have them around so we are very very careful with what we put into the line but uh how you use it now if you have questions or anything like that and you need to see any more uh hit it you know go down there and make a comment on there uh you know down uh, you know down in the comment section there don't forget to hit subscribe and like if you want to see some more videos like this i want to do some where i just talk to you guys about techniques laying in colors doing this how do you soften out how do you build how do you advance an edge how do you soften an edge and if you want to see that hit the comments down there tell me that that's what you want to see a lot of people like me to just see me paint they don't care for videos kind of like this but this this video here watch it a couple of times this video right here will be the most important way you can advance your techniques and reduce your frustrations once you understand the difference between this and this and water and that thickener, you can do anything with these paints, okay? All right. You guys have a great day. Give it a try, and I'll see you on the next one.